Everyone, welcome to this week, 60 minutes of analytical review of the big stories, topical issues and all the controversies around the world. I'm Somna Sambo. And in the headlines, Africa continues to face the issues of coup as uh, threats to the continent uh, continues with uh, lots of um, uh, forces kicking against it as pro-democracy activists call on sit-tight leaders to quit. And also, we'll be taking a look at the challenges in the River State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, where there are issues raised by the APC in that part of the country, uh, which has led President um, Bola Tinubu to make a quick reshuffle in the NDDC nomination. But of course, that of the APC National Women Leader remains. Stay with us as we bring you all these details. Welcome back. A group of soldiers appeared on Gabonese state television during the week announcing the nullification of the recent presidential elections that saw President Ali Bongo declared winner for a third consecutive term. The soldiers dissolved all democratic institutions and effectively ended the reign of Ali Bongo, who succeeded his father, Omar Bongo, after ruling for decades. The military coup in Gabon is a night in sub-Saharan Africa in mostly francophone countries in the last three years and barely a month after soldiers struck in Niger Republic. The political situation in Gabon has heightened anxiety over the resurgence of military intervention in Africa with the African Union condemning the takeover. The same level of anxiety and possibly fear may have informed decisions in Rwanda and Cameroon to reshuffle its top military hierarchy. The two countries have been in the grip of long-standing presidents that have amended their country's constitution to allow them to remain in power for years. Some pro-democracy activists blame the resort to one-party state and sit tight leaders as being responsible for the resurgence of military coups, while also blaming the African Union for being lackadaisical in holding leaders to account. Well, to help us understand the military uprisings and threats to democracy in Africa, we are being joined virtually by the former Prime Minister of Burkina Faso uh, and then Chairman of the Economic Community of West African States, His Excellency Kadri Desiree Wadrago. Uh, the Burkina Bay statement was Prime Minister between 1996 and 2000. Thanks so much for joining us. And we have in the studio right here a season pro-democracy activist and election observer, Ezemwan Wago, who is the Chairman of the Partners for Electoral Reforms. But first of all, uh, we go straight to Ouagadougou, where we have His Excellency joining us. And uh, I go straight to you on the issues that we've seen happening in uh, Gabon. And of course, uh, before that, Niger, and we've seen Mali, uh, and including your own country. Talk to us about the resurgence of uh, military rule in Africa and the talk that uh, uh, the continued sit tight syndrome of uh, some leaders is responsible for this. So let me thank you for uh, allowing me to join this program. And uh, I am privileged to be a member of the West Africa Elders Forum. And uh, that quality, we are following very closely the developments in uh, West Africa, and especially regarding peace and stability in our region. You have spoke about uh, the situation in Gabon. Uh, although Gabon is not part of West Africa and ECO, the case there is similar to what is going on in uh, Niger Republic and other countries in West Africa. Uh, I must say that the reasons of this situation range particularly on the way we conceive democracy and have many things to be corrected. But you know that uh, ECOWAS has uh, adopted uh, since uh, 1991 uh, the declaration of political principles that will uh, set the path of our integration. And you know that peace and are necessary for economic development. So ECOWAS has adopted a protocol in 2001 of demo on democracy and good governance. And the authority of head of states uh, sees that these protocols are uh, applied and 
and by all member states. And indeed, ECOWAS reached a lot of achievement. Uh, till the years 2012, all the 15 countries of ECOWAS were ruled by democratically elected presidents. But unfortunately, in the last three years, we have experienced coup d'etat in uh, Mali, in uh, Guinea, in Burkina Faso, and now in Niger. I think that we have to look the region, the reasons of this. I think they are based on governance and the way we process. It. In order to have stability, you have to carry out transparent, credible elections. And then those elected after these elections should govern the countries with honesty and rightfulness so that we can have a good governance. Good governance and elections are the basis on which we can develop democracy in West Africa. But when crises arrive like this, ECOWAS has to play its role and help the concerned countries to come back to democracy again by negotiation, by diplomacy, by using the protocols of the community. And I think this is what is going on. And I want to pay tribute to all these mediators, negotiators, who are trying to make sure that we can settle all these issues peacefully to the interests of the West African people and to the interests of ECOWAS. Let's talk about this uh, issue that I actually pointed out, which is uh, the major reason why I want you to talk uh, to Arise News. The issues of sit tight leaders, people who have been there for a long period of time. If you go to Equatorial Guinea at the moment, you've had uh, a president that has been there for about 44 years, and then you saw what happened in Togo, and then of course you see what is going on in Senegal, uh, where opposition leaders have been locked up. And then you see what is happening in other parts of Africa. I mean, if you talk about Uganda, for example, Yoweri Museveni has been there for 37 years. Uh, Isaiah uh, Afwarki in Eritrea for 30 years. Uh, Congo, uh, Denis Sasso for 26 years. Rwanda, Paul Kagame for 23 years. And the questions uh, many Africans are asking is that when will these leaders take their leave? See what's happening in Cameroon, closed door to Nigeria. You've seen the leaders uh, reshuffling their military because they are afraid of losing power. What have you as West African elders been doing to talk to some of these seated leaders on the need for them to allow democracy or democratic culture to prevail? Thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, the ECOWAS protocols have already set the rules and the regulation regarding elections. And I believe that if every country go by these rules, there will no be crisis because we would have applied through democracy. But if we do not follow this principle, then we run the risk of finding ourselves in the kind of situation we are in now. This is the reason why it is urgent to call on all African leaders to apply true and sincere democracy. This Perhaps, as I said, by organizing free, fair, and transparent elections, allowing people to express their choice and respecting the choice of the people. As these elections are, true, are credible and accepted by all uh, the candidates, then you have the chance to have a peaceful uh, running of your program, electoral program. But again, good governance, is necessary for democratic stability. If you don't follow the principle of good governance, then you have always problems. So the situation in West Africa, you see, in ECOWAS, we tried as much as possible to see if in the constitution of each member state, it could be possible to introduce uh, a term limiting the terms of the ruling leaders. I believe that uh, this reform is undergoing so that uh, if it is adopted, it will allow us to turn the page of all these disputes and concentrate ourselves on the development of our people and our countries. So, but I 
um, so that if we do not follow strictly democracy, then we will not have a true development in Africa. So democracy and good governance are prerequisites for development and stability in West Africa. And this is what ECOWAS is doing by his own additional protocols. But I agree uh, that this protocol has to be revised in order to allow ECOWAS to follow more strictly the electoral processes and also the governance in the member states. This has to be revised and I am informed that uh, the revision is on the way. I must just hope that this revision of the protocols allow ECOWAS to monitor more closely what is going in member states so that we can avoid this stability because without instability, there is no development. This is the reason why the West African Elders Forum is trying at its best to entertain a dialogue, to advise sitting leaders, to advise opposition leaders, and also to advise the people and political parties so that they, be, they build a consensus before the election. And after the election, there should be a, a possibility of the people to demand results and also to, to have their way to say if the way the country is ruled is good or not, we have to have this freedom. Without freedom, there is no. And I hope that uh, ECOWAS has reached this point a few years ago, but unfortunately, we are witnessing this coup. So we think they have to be managed, help the transition to go back to true democracy, true transparent election, and then also good governance after the elections. This it's, is what I, I you, think. Your Excellency, I'll just ask you to hold on there. Let's speak with the pro-democracy activists that we have in the house here. As in Wan Wangu, one of the key attractions to the military has always been that there's no respect for the outcome of election results, especially like we saw in uh, uh, Gabon. It's usually after elections that we see the military striking. How can we reform this process of leaders getting to know that when the people say they don't want a leader, they actually don't want him? Well, I think some we need to separate sectitism and elections. Um, the, an election may be credible, free, and fair, and still throw up a bad leader. The fact that the fact that election is free and fair does not mean that, in quotes, when I say bad leader. So the, the sectitism has something to do with the weakness of civic groups in those countries where you have sectite leaders. Those weaknesses are sourced, and then you, know, you have foreign interests now driving yeah, those okay. processes internally. But how many of the coup d'etats are predicated on disputed elections? The military is committing treason. The fact that you commit a crime, there is always a people who have different regime of reasons for why they commit crimes. Do we agree that a coup is a crime? If the, it was a failed coup, they will, be, they will be committed for treason. So we cannot celebrate people who commit crimes, who find reason, just like any other professional organization, armed by the state to protect the citizens, they divert that to remove. Well, I'm very sure you would have seen what's going on in Gabon, where lots of citizens no, that, are I'm talking, happy. That, that's what I'm that, saying. No, we, we, all those things need to be. I'm talking, they, you have citizenism. In Gabon, is a, is, a, is, a, is a transition from father, from father to son, and, and all of those things. Yeah, a mix of both. A, a mix of both. Both a city tight leader that. and someone who actually went into an election, and it looked like uh, the people are saying it was rigged. They, they, that one is a dis election. In, democracy has its own internal mechanisms for resolving that. There was a protest in 2020 in the U.S., a, brute, a bloody protest, if you like. It didn't, the military in America did not topple the government because some people disputed the American election. And even before that, the, before that, there was also the, the Algo, uh, if, I, if I remember. Yeah, maybe, in 2000. 2000. There was also, the, it was a disputed election. So the, the argument will not be that we will then support the committing of crimes 
because you dispute an electoral process. If you exhaust that mechanism, the mechanism that democracy itself or the electoral process has put down, for instance, the oversight of the judiciary is also part of the electoral process. So if you exhaust it, and at the end of the day, the outcomes from that, that oversight, does not give you what you want, you wait for another four years for people who have term limits. Now, for the people who manipulate term limits, pro-democracy activists within those and civic groups within those need to be strengthened. Because whether you talk about Rwanda, for instance, it's a transition from military rule. Most of the Pipsi tight leaders themselves were Museveni was a, was a military man. So they, they come in with the pretense that they are coming to right a wrong, and then suddenly themselves become, because that's what they are. First and foremost, they have no democratic temperament. You cannot ask them questions. If you take questions away from democracy, it is dictatorship. So whether I see tightism, the, the see tightism is a form of military rule because it is authoritarian rule. Now, in, how, how, in, do we, how do we ensure that these sit tight leaders don't continue? Because there's an accusation on the AU, ECOWAS, and SADC, and other uh, uh, regional or continental bodies that they are not playing their role very well. That's why you could have this leader saying for so long and even transferring powers there is to, not their, much. to their if children. The, if the internal, internal groups are weak, there is not much any external anybody can do for you. All right. Because these institutions have protocols. Protocols about the sovereignty, about internal sovereignty of the people. You don't, you don't go in there and say you want to you know, take away a leader because he's, he has manipulated his constitution. That has to do with, first and foremost, the, the strengthening of civic groups and pro-democracy organizations. It was the civic pro-democracy organizations in Nigeria that chased away the military. It has, when it is strong, it has capacity to reenact that under civilian rule. All right. Uh, so, Your Excellency, I come back to you, uh, Kadri uh, Desiree Wadrogo, former Prime Minister of uh, Burkina Faso. Let's talk about reforming the African Union and, of course, ECOWAS and other regional institutions. What exactly uh, are elders like you looking at? Because the accusation has been that the AU has been condoning these sit tight leaders, and even when leaders rig election, the AU just issues some. Uh, uh, statements that are not so strong or sort of threatening. And because of that, uh, after a few period of time, you, before you know it, uh, you see uh, some of other colleague presidents going to the inauguration of the president whose election is disputed and who is clamping down on civil society and all those who are insisting that the election was rigged. So what do we do to ensure that continental and regional bodies are strengthened to sort of have some form of control over what member states do? Uh, thank you. Let me first say that uh, I totally agree with Mr. Mwagu uh, when he says that true and transparent elections are not sufficient to guarantee stability. The second point you need to add is good governance. Even if you have transparent election, if, if election, the way the country is ruled is not to the interest of people, then you will see the outcome. So we recommend that we organize free and transparent elections that after the election, we should have leaders working to unify the country, working to see that the interest of the is respected. If you have these two pillars, I believe we can try to lessen the influence of coup in our region. But let me uh, tackle the issue you are raising now. Let me recall that all the countries have their politicians. For the time being, ECOWAS nor AU are not supranational organizations. They can make recommendations, but the implementation or the acceptance of these recommendations is led to the leaders in the country. They are sovereign, and uh, for the current situation, ECOWAS and AU cannot impose reform or impose decision to any member states. Sometimes you see when ECOWAS observes elections, at the end of the elections, there are recommendations that are put forward to the leaders to improve the democracy in that country. 
but it is requires to come and draft the laws and see that everything is correct. Uh, as Mr. Wagush says, we have to have an internal force that can fight for democracy. This is the reason why the civil society organizations are important because they have to translate the will of the and ECOWAS and AU can only recommend that the two actors are the national organization. We, be, we plead for a strong opinion leaders in member states and also we plead that constitutions can be revised to include the general principle agreed by these two organizations. Of course, a coup d'etat uh, is not acceptable because it is going against the will of the people expressed by an election. But you have to make sure that this election is true election and reflect the will of the people. There, you can see that in many of our elections, there are shortcomings. Also, elections are not respected the standards of what an election should be. When you go with this kind of situation, then you run a risk of having crisis. What we can do, and this is what ECOWAS is doing, is make reforms and revisions that will allow these to have a say in the way the leaders are ruling their countries so that they can play an active role to make sure that somebody will not come to, uh, to, to power only to go and to do some things that are not in the interest of its own people. All right. Own so this is what I, I, I want to say. Okay, uh, quickly, let's talk about your home country, Burkina Faso. It has the youngest military leader now, I think uh, at the age of 35 or so. Uh, and we've seen that country going through a transitional process after the military takeover. Uh, what efforts are leaders like you uh, putting in place to ensure that the military keeps uh, to its promise in this transitional period? And then what sort of advice do you think can uh, be made from uh, uh, what you are ex currently experiencing in Burkina Faso that could be translated to uh, countries like Niger as the ECOWAS uh, negotiates with the military government there, and of course Mali and others that are currently, uh, currently going through this crisis. And then how do we prevent other countries from copying this trend of uh, military coups too? Yes, as I say, everyone in ECOWAS condemn a military coup it is a setback in our democratic process. This is why the reason why ECOWAS, AU, UN are condemning uh, coup d'etat. But when it happens, you have to be realistic and find a way out and bring the country back to democracy. You see, in Burkina Faso, we have experienced uh, an insurrection in 2014. We had also a coup d'etat in 2015. And now we have two coup d'etat in one year in Burkina Faso. The situation is complicated because you have the security situation, which is very alarming. You have terrorist groups that occupy uh, more than of the country. And then the government, the leaders, has to make sure that they are able to attack these terrorist groups and to ensure protection of people. This is the reason why people are not satisfied on the way they are protected by their own government. There is this frustration, and then the military come in. But yet again, I believe that democracy is the less worse regime to be applied in our, our Afri West Africa. So the advice that the elders are, are doing, we publish uh, articles, we declaration, we speak broadly to indicate the way we believe we should go in order to uh, renew our democratic process. And this is the same also in Burkina Faso. We are pleading that the transition should be the shortest possible. And during this transition, we should be able to review the situation, all wrong uh, doings we have experienced in the past to make sure that they will never come again and also to have a program for the transition, whereby periodically state actors and non-state actors gather to, to the situation to make amendments, to make proposals, so that we can go forward and come back 
to true and transparent election in order to have a strong democracy. So I think the elders uh, are advising all the actors, uh, including uh, government, opposition, all right. uh, with our views, to okay. Ex okay. experiment true democracy. All right. And I come back to uh, Ezewan Wagu here. Uh, he's just raised a critical issue. Uh, the issues of insecurity uh, not being tackled properly by democratically elected governments attract some of these military uh, uh, men, f you know, into wanting to overthrow government so as to tackle uh, the insurgency, jihadists and all of that, just like we've heard. Uh, how can democratic governments ensure that they actually do what they promise people that they will do uh, during campaigns. And then secondly, there was a recent Afrobarometer report uh, uh, last year which said that 53% of Africans are willing to accept a military government if their despotic leaders become renegades in power and focus on regime security rather than national security. What do you make of that? 66% of the people who currently live in Nigeria are about 24 years. And these 24 year olds have never seen military rule. Just take Nigeria for instance. They didn't know that we had somebody who kept shifting the table, who took government and ran us into the crisis that led to June 12 and the rest of them that we have not recovered from. In, in Rwanda, where people claim, for instance, that Yogame, all of those examples, the most intrinsic value of democracy is freedom. And the military cannot give freedom. They have no capacity for freedom. What they, whether it's, you call it good governance, the military build bridges here. They build hospitals. They build roads. But we push them out. Because the creative energies of the people are not, you can't unleash it under dictatorship and tyranny. Which, whether it's tightism, what you need to build is a strong, neutral, and impartial civil society that is patriotic, not the ones, and media, not the ones that are aligned to the same forces that are trying to pull their countries apart. So if you have the kind of pro-democracy groups that we had in the 90s, where there was no question of whether you are Eze, you are Musa, you are <laughs> So why don't we have that very quickly the, before I get back to him? The, the reason is because the, the idea of politics itself is pulling, does pull apart. It has its entry points into these same centers in, in a way that people begin to hide under one finger. So disputed elections by themselves are not, cannot justify and should never justify military takeover of government. Okay. What we need to do is to build strong civic labor centers and pro-people organizations. All, all right, I'll just ask you to hold engage. on there. Let me go back to the prime minister, former prime minister before uh, we come back to you to end the chat. Uh, he's just raised a very quick issue here. Uh, just before I let you go, uh, the issues of the civic space, it should not be shrinking. We should allow lots of people to have their say. The military has no place in, demo in governance at all. That's what he's insisting, irrespective of the issues of insecurity or insurgency or uh, jihadism that you raised with the military claim is the reason why they are coming back to take power from civilians. Just before I let you go, what would you say about the need to allow the civic space to prosper? It is necessary that in each country you guarantee freedom to the citizens. There is no stability without freedom. If you do not have freedom, it can long some years so that at the end you will go into a crisis. So people need to be allowed to express themselves, to create their own association, to express our views. So I believe that is the basis of democracy. This is the reason why we are pleading that we in Africa, we should apply Democracy. True democracy is freedom, the right to choose your leader, the right to say that what they are doing is not good or is good. This is necessary. And I believe that even when you have a military regime, they should allow people to express their views because it can help them even to correct what they are thinking. So everyone uh, is gaining something when you have freedom. So this is the basis of democracy. And if you look at the ECOWAS, protocols, you will see that it is centered on democracy, freedom, 
and good governance. We have to come back to these values. Otherwise, we will not be able to develop uh, ourselves. And this is saying we should help all the countries in transition to come back very quickly, come back to democracy, come back to freedom, come back to allowing its citizens to express his own views and to evaluate the leaders. So this is uh, the of stability in a country and this is the aim of all the ECOWAS protocols. And I believe that if member states follow this principle, there will be no crisis. Even when you say that there is a seat tight leaders, it is because sometimes maybe the election are not run the way it should. It will be surprising that uh, people are electing the same people for a long time. I think that this put into question the transparency of our election and the way we implement democracy in Africa. We have to improve this way. And this is a struggle that is not only for the leaders, it is a struggle for the people, for the civil society organizers, opinion leaders. They should all mobilize to say, yes, we prefer democracy because it is the least worst regime. And this is the regime that can allow us to make progress in our quest for unity and progress for us. So I would recommend that uh, the, the organization are given maybe a bit more powers to intervene in the way the countries are run. So I believe that this can help so that we cannot invoke every time sovereignty and put all the organization out and then manage as you like. So it can help even the countries to have stability within. So increase the powers of ECOWAS and the regional organization and go back to true democracy, but to re removing all uh, the factors that can create disputes. All right. Uh, we must thank you so much, uh, His Excellency Kadri Desiree Wadrogo, former Prime Minister of Burkina Faso, between 1996 and year 2000. Uh, you have helped us to understand all of this, and the linkage just seems to be the elections. People don't want to leave power, and of course, when we have issues like this and sit tight leaders, we always have military intrusion. But we must thank you immensely for joining Arise News to help us understand these issues and what West African leaders, uh, sorry, elders uh, made up of former uh, heads of state are doing to actually ensure that these military intrusions are stopped uh, at the current situation in Gabon. Well, some people are still saying that uh, we should even go beyond Gabon, but of course there has to be a stop at some point while we ask the countries that are facing these issues beginning to prepare for civilian transitional democracies and not military transitional democracies. Thank you so much. And I come back to you, Ezeen Wangu, just quickly as we try to round off this conversation. We came back to the issues of election. He ended by saying that, look, people must be given the chance uh, to actually air their voices. But uh, if you look at our African democracy, uh, there's this sort of... Uh, a kick against, you know, wanting to touch certain forces. Uh, people just want to sit tight there and they said that they are the best to provide stability, the best to provide security. If you elect someone else that is not strong on ground, that the country may divide into pieces. And so keeping them there looks like it's a sort of pseudo security for the country. Uh, we've seen that people. people saying that in Cameroon, people saying that in Rwanda. What do you make of such uh, thinking very quickly? Sambo, there is difference. The countries that you are mentioning are not in true sense. There is difference between democracy and election. The, and, and there is a mix up constantly. People mix those things up. His Excellency kept talking about true democracy. These things are words that in reality don't, for, for people who, for, for that, the literature, of, of political science, you, you don't have anything called true democracy. So democracy is a democracy. <laughs> the democracy and elections are not, they don't come together. Now, disputed elections, what we need to do is not to invest in criminals, canonize them as messiahs. And we are always doing that. We are quick to do that because we don't understand how repressive... Including people like uh, Kagame in Rwanda? Yes, who, yes. Who many are, people see as a model of good no, governance no, they, they is, no, that is what I'm saying. That Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the rest of them, UAE, they are not democratic countries, but they provide good governance. The internal forces within those places are struggling for freedom to express women's rights. 
inclusivity. Well, some something. Nigerians will also tell you that they prefer good governance to the freedom. They, they, no, they they, they, that, that that's what I'm telling you. Sambo, you were here, you, if you were here when, when, in, when Abacha died. Under the military rule, yes. yeah, of course, of course. If you were here, there were jubilation. It was the same people who, at some point, would have been happy that the military came. The, the, the true value of democracy is not whether you produce uh, dividends of democracy or not. We need to fight for freedom. Mm -hmm. And my thesis is that the military cannot, cannot, will not. Their antecedents, any way at their all. antecedents does not, their temperament, their training has no place for freedom. It has no place for freedom. Right. Indeed, it will, it will continue to shift the goalpost. It will find excuses. Regime of excuses will be hoisted. Why transition? They, 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 they folks in, in, in Burkina Faso, why do you have two sets of uh, coups? It's because one reneged on you know, the transition program. Yeah. The one that is there is pretending to be doing <laughs> transition. But time will tell. But by their nature, by their complexioning, they have no capacity All to right. give freedom. But they will pretend as always, because they think it's a turn by turn thing. The civilians have had their turn. Let us also have our turn. Uh, Civic groups within countries must intensify the campaign for civil rule and, 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 and democracy. All right. Uh, Ezemwan Wago is the chairman of the Partners for Electoral Reform. And uh, we've uh, brought him here to help us understand these issues and the place of good governance. And you've also told us about the issues of election. I think it's very, very important for us to end at where you stopped. Uh, that uh, the military has no place in democracy, Absolutely. irrespective of the Whichever promises of coming to secure the country or whatever. And I hope those who need to hear this are hearing it because if we have a former head of state saying that, and then of course a pro-democracy activist saying this, uh, I think the right situation uh, becomes on everyone to know that democracy, irrespective of the issues on ground, remains one of the best options. Yeah.